webinar. Uh, Donnie and I have been planning to do this for quite a while. Uh, it's taken us a year or two to get ready, um, but we're now finally at a stage where we think we can we can start doing things like this. We will be trying to do this every um, well twice a month, basically, with different topics right up until um, probably provincials, maybe even nationals, um, covering many different topics. For anyone who doesn't know who I am, my name is Duncan. I am um, an assistant to Dani here at WRO South Africa. I am also in the role of head judge for the Robo Mission category here in South Africa, as well as head judge at the international um, competition for WRO, also within Robo Mission. Dani, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Greetings, everybody. Lovely to have you all on board and uh, for our inaugural webinar relating to topics around WRO. A great idea to obviously be able to share a lot of stuff with people instead of answering personal questions all the time. And slowly but surely, hopefully we'll see the numbers come up on this. Um, this is being recorded, so we will make it accessible somewhere. Um, and um, Duncan, my <laughs> assisted me, right hand man, and he's certainly dealing with a lot of the stuff that I've got no idea about, but uh, I'm the national organizer for WRO in South Africa and uh, been running or working with it in, in South Africa now for 10, 11 years and also um, involved with taking the teams to the international finals. Um, and internationally, I'm also uh, on the head judges panel for future innovators. And uh, yeah, love what we do. And uh, again, the very hard work goes into setting this all up and getting uh, competitions going and registrations. And uh, people think it just happens. There's a, a, a hectic buzz in the office um, in preparation for this. So it's always wonderful to see it come together. And um, yeah, welcome everybody. And, and typically I see a lot of names of people who participated already. And then also I see um, some new names that I wouldn't know. And sometimes we don't know all the names because obviously there are many new people joining us all the time. So typically we're going to repeat a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of information, but today really is about at the start and a bit of an orientation um, and just reiteration of for, for those people who've been around for a while. So World Robot Olympiad of South Africa is part of WRO Association, which has been around for 14 years approximately, and we've been members for 11. Um, and uh, international competition. I actually had the number somewhere which I wanted to repeat and I've just forgotten where they are. But effectively at the international competition, there were 375 teams from approximately 75 countries. The numbers around the world that participate before those international competitions are obviously what we're concerned about because that is uh, the participation base of children participating in robotics in, 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 uh, in South Africa and in, in countries around the world. So obviously we, we run the competition and we have to have face-to-face -face competitions. The face-to-face -face competitions are the only competitions that you can actually qualify to go to the international for. And um, uh, basically those dates are set and they are on the website. And the website being www.wrosa.co.za. If you haven't been there yet, if you've registered, you've probably been on there, right? But nice to be able to share that. So from a dates perspective, um, this year, things slightly earlier because international is slightly earlier, but effectively, um, you know, we have, we should always start off with the Gauteng Johannesburg uh, Provincial because it's close to us and obviously we can iron out all the little issues, et cetera, et cetera, before we go on to the other provincial ones, which are further away. So typically this year, 21, 22 July is its Explorer and Provincial Gauteng. 28 and 29 July. And I, when I say two dates, the, the, the first date is the Friday, which is normally the Explorer face-to-face. -face. And then the 29th is the Provincial Heart in Victoria. And then this year, we've got all the other provincials around the country happening on one date, which is the 5th of August. And uh, we have five provincials. We saw there, Gauteng, we had to split a while back. Northern Cape, Eastern Cape, KwaZulu Natal, Gauteng. Akati West is a regional, but that's our township robotics competition. And um, the Western Cape, which I skipped because I scribbled through there somewhere. But uh, uh, we Explorer Eastern Cape, the 
We've been working really hard to get the Eastern Cape up and running as far as its own provincial is concerned. And this year we'll be running our first event there. Uh, but it'll be explorer competition only, unless there's somebody who really pushes us, because then we just need official WRO committee people there to obviously verify scores, etc. Yeah, and then we have um, a break from the 5th of August until we have our uh, national competitions. The 8th of September is the Friday Explorer at Cura Aurora in Johannesburg. Obviously, the venues are all up there now, and they are all confirmed. And then the 9th of September is our national competition. Uh, the in-house competition, which is also on the date, um, which we'll learn about a little bit later or down the line, is 11 to 20 October. And then our international competition this year is 7, 9, of, 7, 9 November in Panama. And I really hope that some of you will be working towards this. It's always interesting to travel and see what teams do around the world. Then just a bit of orientation around You've heard the five provincials and where they are. Um, and typically, from the provincial competitions, what happens is uh, we draw up a national ranking list. And depending on availability of space, but generally we have 12 to 18 teams within each category of rubber mission that qualify to come to the uh, national competition. And obviously, we have the other categories. So just to go through those categories, there are four categories, rubber mission in three age groups which is elementary, junior, and senior, and um, uh, robo sports. Why I say robo sports and robo mission together? Because those are the categories which use the Lego um, brand of products only. So the coding might be, might be different, but you have to use Lego brand of products in those competitions. The other two are the future in innovators and the future engineers. Basically, in those, future engineers is the very advanced one, which is basically age groups 14 to 19. And there, uh, they use much more advanced uh, uh, equipment. And this, and the challenge has been self-driving cars. You may see it. If you don't know any of these, you can always go and YouTube them, and uh, you can see examples of them. And then the future innovators category, uh, that is, uh, there's no restriction on hardware or software. So you don't have to use Lego. You can. It always makes it colorful. But you can use any product out there to present a solution to judges. So those are the four categories. We're not going to go into anything in depth. They are all on the website. Okay, and then those four categories are the categories which are then allow you to qualify for the international competition. In South Africa, a few years ago, that was very, very strict, and we found that it, it didn't do much for the confidence of teams. So we introduced uh, entry-level competitions in South Africa, and that's typically where you see the Explorer, you know, on the website. And Explorer effectively is um, yeah, our starter competition. And it allows teams with no randomizations and, and objects in all the same places to have many turns to then eventually at competition recode or reprogram what they wanted to do to add as much score as possible. So they have two hours generally to do that. And we have two age groups for Explorer, which is uh, elementary and junior, really the same as, as Mission. But um, importantly, with Explorer, we do do those face-to-face -face, um, as well as in-house. But face-to-face, -face, for example, you can also, within the ranking system, qualify to, to participate at national level and be the national winner. Uh, it's been very popular and certainly is helping with helping our mission and generally robotics go from strength to strength because more people are getting involved and slowly building their confidence and then their knowledge to be able to go to the more difficult, difficult challenges. Um, then, because so obviously the issues around the issues around uh, logistics and travel, and also obviously the price of entering the competitions, um, which in fact I'll cover right now. Uh, first of all, to when you register, those that have already, you'll see that you're paying three hundred rand per participant for the provincial competitions. And then um, the big difference is, if you, if you then qualify for nationals, generally there's another charge, because that's obviously getting together our real, our real McCoy of an event. Um, what's really good about also the in-house competition and doing Explorer and what we call now the Rover Challenge, which is for WeDo and uh, Spike Essential 
and any other platform is that people don't have to travel. So teachers and club mentors, for example, can run these competitions at their venues without any travel and um, you know, have all the children participate in a competition. So it's something to aim for and something to work towards. Um, typically with these competitions, again, uh, oh, the cost on those competitions is that you now pay 300 rand per institution, so per club or per school that you enter, and then, and then as many teams as possible can enter this competition. There's a lot more information uh, around that. Very importantly, again, face-to-face -face competitions, you need your own robot on your own laptop on the day of the competition. And typically that's where in-house also assists because you can use the same robot and the same laptop on one every of the 10 days and enter 20 teams, you know, for example, if you have two robots and two laptops. And uh, it's been very welcoming. And in fact, we, we did it officially last year for the first time. And in fact, we had 400 scores submitted from around the country. And we're expecting that to grow dramatically. Um, even with other work that I do with uh, SASTA and um, NRF and the Department of Science and Innovation, where we put product on science centers, those, those teams and places will all be doing uh, in-house as well, because now there's a platform, there's a platform for their teams to participate and be acknowledged and uh, receive certificates for their score achievements. Um, then, just from a national perspective, um, you know, to take teams to the international competition, we are limited to the number of teams that enter each category. Uh, so, you know, for example, for every, for in future, in, future innovators, for example, you need to have 25 teams. Uh, you have, you need to have five teams to send one, one team to international and 25 teams to send two teams to international. I can't remember exactly what uh, the uh, missions are, but I think it's around about 75. So once you go past 75, you can enter, uh, well, above five is one, above 75 is two, and above 100, for example, it becomes more. This is typically limited because the international hosts can only handle, um, you know, so many uh, teams from around the world. And just so that you know, at the moment, probably about three years ago, the number of member countries around the world was 72, and we're up to around about 92 member countries. Um, and 72 countries, teams from 72 countries participated in the international last year. So that's a little bit about the orientation. Obviously, we will have a QA and a um, after this, so you can be welcome to put questions into the chat, which we will try and answer later. But um, that's the orientation, and I'm now going to hand over to Duncan, who's going to talk to you about the um, beginner guide, which he is going to make available on the website, and then obviously how the Q&A works, because we're really putting an effort into the Q&A to make sure that if you're unsure about something before you phone or before you don't know, go there and have a look because 10 to 1, it's answered. And don't, I'm sure they can also ask questions on that, right? Yes, they can. They will be able to ask yeah. questions there, but yeah. I'll explain okay. all of that, yeah. Yeah, while you're live, uh, I'm going to hand over to you, Dunks. Thanks, and you can carry on. Great. Thanks, Donnie. All right, so what Donnie and I have been trying to do for a few years, and we managed to do it this year, everything seems to be happening this year, is we've had an idea of creating what we call a beginner guide. So a guide that's for really people who are starting out on the WRO that will answer a lot of questions that we get asked most of the time. So it's an FAQ basically, and it's designed for anyone who's new, maybe even old to WRO who wants to find out a little bit more about how the competition works and it will be a general um, guide. So it doesn't go very in depth into the competitions in that year. So for example, it's in 2023. Nowhere does it say what the competitions are for 2023. It's designed as a general guide for anybody to access and to use just to learn about the WRO and prepare. And it will help to answer a lot of those beginner questions that we do receive. And it looks like this, if I can share my screen. All right, what you should be seeing is a PDF document with a big robot flying over um, South Africa with the South African flag. And it looks pretty cool. That's our front cover. And this guide here is uh, 12 pages long. 
and contains quite a few questions, all the way from what is the World Robot Olympiad, right down to mistakes that can be made with registration, the whole registration process, fees, um, what are South African only um, categories, what are the international categories, which ones should I maybe enter? There is some of that there as well. So for anybody who's new to WRO, I strongly suggest picking up this guide. It will be available on the website under resources. You can download it and give it a read. And if then you've got any questions, we can then jump to our Q&A. But the guide itself, as I said, is a very simple guide. It's mostly text-based. And it comes with two things. There's a summary of the category. So there you can see rubber mission category where it's a simple summary, and then it goes in depth. So if you want to just skim over what rover mission is, you would focus on the summary. But if you want to get more in depth as to what rover mission actually is, you can read the in depth. And we've done that for all of the categories where it, then it explains age groups. It explains um, how to register for each of them the do's and don'ts of the competition, as well as what to expect if you go through to a national or even an international event. So please, if you are new, be sure to give that a read because I think it will be very beneficial to you. And if you've got questions on it, we can then jump to our Q&A. So the Q&A looks like that over there. If you go to the WROSA website, what you will see is our homepage. And right up at the homepage, we have the About Home and WRO Competitions. Under WRO Competitions, you will find this lovely little tab here called Q&A. What we've tried to do is take all of the questions we've been answered, both previously throughout the many years, all about how the WRO works, what the robots do, problems with robots, problems with competitions, all the way down to this year's specific categories. So if you've got a question about um, something with an robo mission, maybe the one element you're not sure how to place it, before you email or call WRSA, check the Q&A because it might just be there. For everyone who's new and even for the veterans amongst us, the Q&A will always and I always, always, always be more precise than the actual rules. If something has been changed within the Q&A, that change is official and takes precedence above what the standard rules say. So please make sure you keep a brush with what's on the Q&A, not only the Q&A here for WR South Africa, but also the Q&A for the international competition, which you can access on the international website. So having a look at the Q&A, how it works is we have the different categories that you can have a look at. We've got general WRO questions all the way down to questions specific to the in-house challenge. How it works is you have multiple tabs that you can click on, and each of them will have specific information to that heading. So looking at WRO equipment, it's got questions on what equipment you need to compete in WRO, where can you get it from, and even where can you get your LEGO kits from. Questions about registration, how that all works, and general Q&A, right down to, if we look at RoboMission, you can see we've got general questions within RoboMission, and this will be the same for all categories. We then have the specific RoboMission questions, and there you can see we've already got some coming through for the elementary age group, which have been an update in the rules or has been an update within the official rules. So please, make sure you have a look at the Q&A. It should be your first stop if you've got any questions relating to WRO South Africa. Now, what happens if you don't find your question there in the Q&A? Well, first thing you need to do is email wro at handsontech.co.za and ask your question. If it is there on the Q&A, you'll be directed to it. If not, I'll respond to it and it may appear on the Q&A itself. But please use the Q&A and the beginner guide to make sure that you can follow all of your questions and that you can ask your questions there. The guide does give you all of our details, so you are welcome to read the guide and find out how to contact us with the various things and what questions to then ask. So the Q&A 
as I said, is going should be the very first stop for everything that you want to jump to and everything that you should be reading. And again, if you have any questions for now, you are welcome to type them in the chat if you are able to. Otherwise, mm -hmm. type them into the Q and A on the actual chat. Otherwise, we will be putting up our um, we will be putting up the uh, turning on microphones and things for later Q and A with everybody who's here. See, my brain doesn't work sometimes because it's getting late in the day and load shedding is draining me. All right, so that is the beginner guide. That's the information about the beginner guide. It will be going up on the website today, so you'll be able to find it under resources. So please have a look there. It should be up by the end of today. All right, back over to you, Danny. All right, thanks. Thanks very much. Um, just some pointers. One is, um, you know, for me, involved with international. Um, even the Q and A uh, on the international platform is a good read. So once you've read the rules, because there's a lot of reading, and then typically what happens is Dunks and I sometimes look at each other over our laptops or computers and say, hmm, you can see this person didn't read the rules. You know, so if you are going to be participating in one of the categories, make sure that you have read those rules. I mean, we do it, obviously, taking our teams to internationals. But the other thing that uh, I find very informative a lot of the time is actually just reading the Q&As on the international. So within the categories that you participate in, just go there and in fact make it an, a, a, an appendix or an addendum to your rules because you're going to run into little things there which are going to come up that you that you, know, you will want to answer. And in fact, they'll preempt some of your questions. The other thing which I noticed obviously is the age groups within um, the Robo Mission category and the Robo, uh, sorry, Future Innovators category. You know, those, those age groups used to be specified uh, where they were 8 to 12, 13 to 15, 16 to 19. And uh, you'll see that they've now changed and they've, there's a bit of an overlap into the younger age group, except for elementary. Elementary you can't go uh, younger than eight. And the reason they did that was because sometimes there were older participants in 18, call it uh, 14, who had friends who were 12. Okay. And then we, with permission, they were allowed to participate in the older age group. So what they did is they just actually changed the age. Unfortunately, what's happening is that some, some teams around the world and some people in, in South Africa are also now, they're putting 10-year-olds or 11-year-olds into the junior category. Okay, And if you put 11-year-olds, three or two 11-year-olds, it doesn't matter how good or clever they are, but the challenges are just so much more difficult. And Duncan, out of rover mission, will be able to you know, obviously vouch for that. So the reason the age group is slight, has slightly younger or expanded is to really accommodate one younger individual into the older grade age group. So make sure that you are very, very aware of the ability level of your team or the people that the, the, the participants that, or the learners that you're going to be entering and you know, if they're new at it, don't enter them into the older age group or the more difficult ones. You know, lead them in the process. You'll have more success in the long run. So just a little explanation about not making uh, the 11, a junior age group, you know, uh, three 11-year-olds. The reason was, is you hopefully you've still got some older, mature, better learned kids who then can accommodate a younger uh, person. Uh, Dunks, so I don't know if you want to add to that. Yeah, um, I think Donnie is correct. In my experience, try and have your age groups stay within the age group that that child should be in. Yeah. It's very demoralizing for a child who's too young to be entering the junior category, participating in junior, because they generally really don't do that well against some of the older children. There are some exceptions, but please be careful and always think about the child that you're entering and what would be best for them. And remember, we've got multiple categories. So if you feel that the pressure of robo mission might be too much for the child you are working with, take a look at possibly future innovators. Take a look at doing Explorer because it might be a bit easier on that child. Within WRO South Africa, we want to try and breed this idea of robotics is fun. Robotics is a worthwhile experience. And we want people to keep coming back because they've had a great time at WRO. And the kids have had a great time at WRO. and actually walked away learning something. So if your teams are not having fun, 
just make sure you've entered them into the right category and see what they want to do. Thanks, guys. Um, look, I mean, we're not going to you know, force information down here. We're obviously going to lead these webinars with certain categories, and we're going to spend more time talking about special, you know, specialized categories. And also, hopefully, we're going to bring some specialists in down the line to actually talk about the more difficult things, um, you know, in rubber mission, for example, with randomizations and and you know, and and, and that programming technology. So, so that we can assist people with that, and we'll give examples of those. And we're going to, we won't be doing all the talking. We're going to uh, obviously bring people in to do the talking for us around those um, more difficult things. So, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I don't see any further questions in the chat. So maybe we can just, you know, open up so that maybe with the hand up, um, people can uh, actually ask uh, physical questions. Uh, we might. I mean, I don't know. We're happy to see everybody too, actually. So you know, make this make this around a cup of tea if you want. But maybe we can just have everybody on and just put your hand up, and then Duncan, whose eyes are better than mine, will see the raised hand and and we'll invite you into in for the question. Yeah, that's great. So if you've got questions, feel free to raise your hand if you're able to, and I will activate your microphone and you'll be able to ask your question. Otherwise, type it into the chat channel and you can ask away. Please, with the um, Q&A and even with now, please don't think that your question is not relevant. Um, there are some very crucial questions which might be very simple, which a lot of people miss. For example, we get so busy with everything, the international teams get so busy with everything that they've even misspelt mission on the Robo Mission mats on the official WRO international templates. So if you've got an official mat, just take a look at how mission is spelled and you'll see that it's a mistake there in the actual spelling. So people do miss things. And I think it took four or five months before somebody actually noticed <laughs> that on the, the thing there. So please, there are no stupid questions. There are no silly questions. What you ask could really help somebody else who's thinking the same thing. And we will do our best to answer whatever questions you have now. All right, so I'm going to, I think, activate microphones. So please, if you have a question, just turn on your mic and you are welcome to ask a question. While Duncan's doing that, um, just something which will pop up and we generally only deal with um, closer to competition time. But um, you can scroll back on Facebook and you'll see the event schedule so that you know what the timing is like. But typically, if you do a, uh, an Explorer competition on a Friday afternoon, it sort of runs between 1 o'clock and, and 4 o'clock. And uh, the teams obviously have two hours to actually score. And then the, the event itself on the Saturday, which is then all the proper WRO categories, generally runs with registration starting at 7.30, 8 o'clock, and we generally finished with awards at around about 3.30. Um, the other thing, just a mission that will happen, but I'm just talking now because I'm not seeing any raised hands. Um, anybody out there wanting to ask any questions? Please also just comment if you think this has been worthwhile. Obviously, we can't cover everything in one webinar, but that's why we've sort of spread things a little bit further. So, um, you know, we'd like to just hear whether this is working for you and hoping hoping that it leads you to all the right places for Q&A, for example, beginner guide. And uh, Duncan did, did, did also stipulate the, um, the Q&A uh, where you can. You can also send us an email if you want to. Generally, we would like to, to you know, anything that we ask, which nobody else is seeing, uh, if, if it's pertinent, uh, Duncan will add that um, to the Q&A itself. Uh, great, yeah, you see, I just wanted to at least be getting people to talk. Eh? I'm looking for compliments, you know, because... So, uh, I see we do have a question there about, um, would a team do both days? So that would mean, I'm assuming it would mean, would a team be able to participate in both Explorer and in RoboMission, something on the Saturday, so the Friday and the Saturday. And my answer as someone who's done RoboMission is I would not do that. 
um, only because the admin around trying to get a team to compete in both is quite a bit. The pressure and stress it puts on the team is really not worth it, and I would focus on one or the other. I wouldn't do both. Um, I would really just focus on one or the other. What you could do is participate in the Explorer competition, the physical event, or the physical WRO official events, and then participate in the in-house events. So there it gives the teams um, about three months before the in-house events, and that's enough time for them to calm down. And in-house is more relaxed, and it is quite a fun thing to do at your club, just to run by yourself with your teams. And we'll explain more about in-house when we get to the in-house category, I think in next month sometime, I think we've got it scheduled for. So I see we've got some more questions coming through. Um, let's see. The recording will be available. Yes, we'll put up the recording on the website as well. You'll find it through the Facebook page. Please, if you're ever looking for information about WRO South Africa, check the website or keep up to date with our Facebook page. Dani posts very regularly on the Facebook page. And when I update the website, Dani is normally right behind me with Facebook. So you will get the notification coming through there. Where can you find special specific pieces of Lego to build the elements for the various categories? That I think is a very important question. Everything WRO is available through hands-on technologies. They are the official Lego education provider for Southern Africa, and they are receiving a lot of the WRO element sets. So there's a specific WRO set that has been made by Lego for the competition. And in there, you will find all of the pieces that you need. As a tip, just from my experience, for those who aren't quite sure, or if there's um, anything that you're looking for that you maybe can't find through hands-on tech, have a look at sort of secondhand shops. You do find a lot of Lego at secondhand shops and focus on the technique sets. You'll find quite a few deals there where you can get some really cool pieces to help you build your Lego robots. Ah, I see the question that the WRO box set does not include everything you need. So there's two sets. There's the WRO, um, old WRO set, and then this year they released a brand new set. So there is a second set, um, which is cheaper than the first one, but you do need both to compete within the Robo Mission category. Within Explorer and the in-house competition, so Rover, we have kept it to just the basic um, element box. So you don't need both boxes to participate in Explorer. You only need the old box. I hope that answers your question. So I yeah, see so the we've... second. Yeah, the second. The second box is an expansion set to uh, to obviously extend um, the box one from the years ago, and they wanted to make the challenges a little bit more interesting. So um, if there definitely isn't a piece, um, is a piece missing? We will check. Maybe you can just email us with a piece that you think is missing, and we'll just make sure that is in the set. But generally, over the years now, two or three years, Duncan has worked with those, and, and all the sets are there. It is very difficult, and thanks. Perhaps you can comment on whether, um, you know, if you're doing different ages or the different levels, uh, whether a box uh, would cover more than one of those. Yeah. So my suggestion there is always buy one box per category, um, only because that box is going to be used next year, the year after, and the year after that. So if you have one per category, you're guaranteed to have all the pieces you need, no matter what year is going to happen, um, or what the challenge will be in that year. So that would be my suggestion. I wouldn't try and do that. Um, I wouldn't try to keep buy one box to do two tables, because you might run out of pieces unless you've got some lying around from other projects. I do see a question about the actual color of the building pieces, so the building elements on the table. Is it something that that's um, important? And the answer there is it only affects really what you want to do with your robot. So for example, if you've got a color sensor on your robot and your robot's driving up to um, one of the pieces that needs to have a color sensor read it, and it's the wrong color, it won't help you towards the final product of your robot because you're going to have to change that all at the provincial event or the or the international event or the national event that you you've entered. 
So you are welcome to use different color pieces if you're practicing, but be aware that at the provincial events, all of the elements should be exactly as they are within the rules. So please just keep that in mind. And with some of the elements like the solar panels, for example, the color doesn't matter really if you are not reading the color. It only matters if you need an element piece that the color needs to be read. So for example, if a red block is moving around the table somewhere, it's randomized. Your robot needs a sensor that can pick that red block up and move it to a different thing. So making that block black will not help you because your robot needs to scan red. All right, I hope that answers your question. And then I see Donnie's posted some information about yeah, the so expansion sets. The price list obviously is on the hands-on tip website, which I've added the link for. But um, I'm just looking at the price list here now. So the brick set one, which is the basic set, was seven is seven ninety nine, and then the the expansion set, which you do now need for each one of the categories uh, for mission, is five ninety nine. So it's six hundred rand for the extra set of goods. And those, you know, typically we've been using the the old brick set uh, now for uh, approximately this is our third year. And uh, with the new one added, they'll, they won't change it again now, and we'll use the same ones with variations for, with variations of builds for the next for the next two years after this. Something else I wanted to mention, just relating to Facebook, um, when Duncan spoke about keep an eye on it. So I know you know we we bombarded with social media, but certainly if you're going to be participating in WRO this year. It's a very good idea to actually like and follow the page because then you get you get notified when there is new new information relevant to 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 WRO. So that's very very good advice. I know it because I do it with things around the world, and you get an email, and if it's relevant, that's great. But at least you see notifications. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. Carry on. Yep. So I am sharing the well, I'm sharing on my screen here the Hands On Tech website for WRO. This is where you can go to find all of your WRO stuff. You can see that the mats are there as well. We have in the top left hand side the World Robot Olympiad brick set. This is the official brick set. This is the what we call the old brick set. And down in the very far bottom right, you have the WRO. Um, expansion set. That's the new set that's been released, and that's the one that you need to do, use with um, the current competitions as they are on the tables. However, there may be some extra pieces in there that you can use for other builds. But try and look after those sets if you get them, because as I said, they will be used for years to come. All right, let's see. Do we have there any was other questions? A question. Yeah, there's a question just relating to obviously the times. The times for the competition to be confirmed because you need to make arrangements with school transport the sooner the better. So as I said, what you can do if you just go onto Facebook, and you actually go into pictures, or you scroll down, you can have a look at last year's uh, competition events and their uh, and the uh, and the times there. But if you if you'd like me to send you a copy, then please just uh, send us an email. Say you know, give us an example of the competition and whether it's the Friday afternoon for Explorer or the Saturday for Mission. So just do that, and, and I'll send you a copy of that. That's uh, Katleho from North Riding College. Yeah, and I think as a as a general guideline um, over the past years, if you work on competitions starting at or registration opening eight o'clock um, for your weekend events, so that's your official WRO categories, eight o'clock in the morning, um, that's a good idea to aim at. If you are coming to an Explorer event on a Friday, it's what, one o'clock, Danny? This would be the, the general starting time that we've used, but these are subject to change depending on the venues. So please just keep up to date with the Facebook page. Once times are released for any of the events, there will be an update on the Facebook page as well as on the website. If you've visited our website, you should hopefully see the big splash screen that appears. It's the annoying thing that I've put in place that no matter what page you go to, it will appear on the first time. And that always has the latest information with regards to the website change, to the WRO change in South Africa, as well as the WRO in the international competition. So if you're not sure if you're up to date, just jump onto the WRO SA website and just read that splash page and it'll give you the latest information regarding WRO South Africa. Yeah, just uh, there's a question as far as the Facebook page is concerned. Yeah, so it is, it's WRO South Africa. So without the SA like that, but if you if you just go onto Facebook and you ask for WRO South Africa and write the word, you'll find it. 
I and will... also you can go to you can go if you go onto the website the facebook link is on that as well yes so we've got a resources page on the website if you click on resources on the top right hand side of our website you will find a bunch of useful um, exactly as I said, resources or as it's named. And there you will find various things. I will bring it up now just to show everybody how it looks. Um, just so that everyone can see it. Because I think it is very useful to always go over these kinds of things because you never know what kind of questions people may ask. And it is a very important piece. So let me share my screen again. Here we are. So here I am on the WOSA website. This is the annoying splash screen I told you about. Um, if you're not seeing this, well done. You've got a very good antivirus and very impressed. It stops pop-ups. However, this one I've made very cleverly, so all of you should be seeing it. If you click on resources, it'll take you to WRO resources. And here we've got information on our webinars, the Q&A page, there's the links to the Facebook page, the WRO community group, that's an international group that's run by coaches and judges from around the world where they will ask questions and often you will find the international community answering a whole bunch of questions. Um, if you go onto that group and you ask a question that's specific to South Africa, I don't think anybody will answer it because um, it's specific to South Africa. You should be coming straight to us and we'll be able to give you the information a lot quicker. Is then the WRO Association website. That's the official international website. And then Hands on Technologies is the Lego education provider and one of the WRO SF founders and custodians. So you'll be able to find a lot of the WRO information on our website as well as many resources. If there are other resources that you would like, training videos, um, tips and tricks, things that you think are important, please send me an email and I'll look at adding that onto the WRO resources page. Um, I can give you all the videos that I trained with and trained on, as well as things that I think are relevant to competitions for this year. Great, thanks. Um, if we're... Yeah, there you go. Would like training videos. Okay, well, Duncan will do that. That's fantastic. So I don't want this recording or this to go on too long. So if there aren't any more specific questions, just for people going to watch the um, the, the video of this later, we don't want it to go on too long. But um, just a little rundown. So obviously this is wonderful, and we've had up to thirty people involved here today. Um, please uh, join the other ones. Have a look at what the topics are. If the topics are relevant to what you're involved with. And just an idea of um, what we'll be doing in the webinar coming in two weeks time. Uh, basically, Duncan will discuss team registration, how it works, and what you need, etc. For those that haven't registered yet, we we have, um, I don't know, around about 60 teams registered um, at the moment, but generally we have a pickup of those registrations closer to closing the closing date. Um, and the closing date for registration is the 30th of June um, 2023 for those who aren't in the same year as us. Um, but uh, and now I've lost my train of thought. Oh, I was just talking about the team registration. And then we're going to start breaking down overviews of the Robo Mission, Robo Sports, and Overview Explorer. And then we'll have general question time in hand. And then please feel free to contact us after this. If something wasn't answered, you're welcome to. Work, we're welcome to to email us and we'll add them to q a but have a look at your q a's and uh yeah and spread the word that uh you know, that you found this beneficial and we look forward to seeing you on these webinars i like i'm sorry i'm not seeing all the faces i'm getting tired of duncan's face and my face but it's lovely to have you with us and uh lovely to have the questions and uh we are at your service you know you're paying for this and we want the kids and you to have the most knowledge and the best experience uh, most knowledge for the competition and the best experience participant in it. So it's been really, really good um, having you all on board and uh, from Duncan and myself, unless there's something else, I don't see another question. Um, until um, the Wednesday the 17th at 3 o'clock, we'll be back in the same places. We'll see you there. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody. And again, if you've got any questions, please send them through to WRO at handsontech.co.za and we'll be able to answer them through there. That's the main channel for questions around WRO South Africa. Thank you, everybody, and have a very good afternoon and enjoy. Thank you, Don. Thank you.